Hey there, everybody in the FFPE Global Facebook group, and hello to everybody who sees this video on YouTube as well. Welcome to a late edition of this week's Ask an Old Mog video, where we take a look at questions and try to answer them in a visual format. I'm running a little bit behind this week because I was out of town for a funeral, and so if you were looking for this week's episode and couldn't find it, you know, you're not wrong, I'm just running late. And so here we are, um, but we've got a question that came from the Facebook group, and I want to try and talk about it because I think it talks about some important aspects of trying to do um, damage, which is pretty much the main goal of a lot of fights in this game. Uh, so let's get into it. So our question comes from a user who asks, when an ability says it does 50% spirit or defense unmitigated damage, what does that mean? Does that mean that it draws from your spirit? Because um, his understanding was it's supposed to be based on your attack. Now, uh, this user was asking about one of the new unit Regina's quest uh, abilities um, that does 50% spirit unmitigated magic damage. And he's just trying to be like, well, where does this come from? If it says spirit, why is it magic based? What's going on? Um, this is a really good question because it is somewhat complicated if you're not used to thinking about it. Um, and we're going to break it down into different pieces. Uh, first and foremost, what you need to know is Partially unmitigated damage basically just means that it's going to ignore part of an enemy unit's defense or spirit stat when it comes time to calculate damage. And the impact of that you can see on the mechanics page of the wiki, which is one of my favorites. I've talked about this before. Um, if you search for unmitigated on the wiki, you find out that um, an ability that ignores 25% defense or spirit will increase your damage by 1.33 times. Or if it ignores 50% defense and spirit, it's going to increase your damage by two times. Um, and that's pretty significant, you know, because sometimes these abilities that, that ignore defense or spirit have a smaller modifier, but because of the defense or spirit ignoring component, they do more damage than other abilities that don't ignore it, even if they have a larger modifier. And I've, I've been preaching modifiers a lot lately, you know, raising modifiers, focusing on abilities with good modifiers, etc. This is an exception to the rule. Sometimes the modifier is lower, but you do more damage just because the spirit or defense is that much lower because of the ignoring portion. So that's that's basically what that does. So that's what that means. Um, so the question then becomes, you know, where can you find information about this in the game? If you look at an ability's description in the game, um, you can learn what kind of ability it scales off of, what kind of attack it is, and if it will ignore a percentage of the enemy's defense or spirit. And you're gonna do this by clicking and holding on any ability in the game. So I'm gonna start by demonstrating this with Lone Lion Squall here. If you go to um, his Blasting Zone Limit Burst, for example, and just click on it, it tells me that it's a physical type, attack-based physical damage ability. It does, you know, an ADX modifier because 8,000 divided by 180 um, and that's all it really is so it's physical type attack based okay if I go back a step and I go to his SLB true blasting zone click and hold I can see that it does a lot of other things it does some breaks it does enemy resistance down and it does a much bigger physical attack based type damage 120x but it has 50% unmitigated damage. So that basically increases the damage by two. So that means it's really a 240X modifier instead of a 120. That's basically all it is. And here's where you see that it's gonna ignore, right? Unmitigated 50% defense. It's gonna ignore 50% of the defense to make my modifier twice as high. That's basically it. Let's look at another example. Here's Angela looking at her um her true ancient curse click and hold um i see that it does magic based magic damage and it's physical type so it's a physical type ability that means it's going to use physical killers even though she's a magic damage dealing unit it's going to be based on her magic so magic based magic damage it does an adx right but it gets boosted up to five times potentially up to a um uh, uh, potentially adding uh, 40x on top of that so pretty big pretty big damage she can go she can get pretty strong but it's not unmitigated not unmitigated damage so it might be better it might not the enemy is going to get the full benefit of their um, their spirit stat because it's dealing magic damage magic damage always targets spirit unless otherwise stated okay but it's physical type that's what's tricky she needs physical killers but she does magic damage she's a confusing unit Let's look at something a little more straightforward. Summoner Yuna, her energy blast from Veil 4, right? Spirit-based 
other type damage. It's evocation damage rather than magic or physical, right? So it's evocation damage, but it's based on her spirit. So this is where we're finding out what ability it keys off of spirit based. Okay, cool. Moving on. Beach Blaster Olive, right? Let's look at her Bamboo Blaster Limit Burst, her base Limit Burst, right? It does a break and physical type, magic-based magic damage. So she's, again, physical type, needing physical killers, but she's doing damage based on her magic stat, and it's attacking the enemy's spirit. We see that right here and ignoring 50% of it, making this 150 really a 300. Pretty cool. So we're, I think we're starting to understand a little bit, and this also stacks up. All right, it's going to give damage boost for two turns, rather. One more weird one. Yoshikiri, Star Hurricane. Okay, if I scroll down, see right here, it's a uh, 25x physical type spirit-based magical damage. So it's a magic attack, which means it targets the enemy's spirit, but it happens to be based on his own spirit, and it's physical type and does not ignore any damage, any of the um, the spirit or defense. So it's just strictly a 25x ability, but it's physical type. So he needs physical killers, but he's doing magic damage again. So kind of goofy, you know, kind of kind of weird um, how you how you read that. But that's what you need to do is you need to go into these abilities and look. So like for example, he's got this ability, you know, finishing combo. If I click on it. I can see this is a physical type spirit based magic damage as well. You can see this for anything. If I want to find out what smoke barrier does, just click and hold. Okay. And it does damage reduction for one turn to a single ally and all damage or all, all reduction for all allies, 20% for three turns. Cool. So I can just find out what these things do by looking at it. But again, the, the things we're focusing on here is what type is it? Is it physical magic or other evocation, right? Or is it based on bit attack, magic, defense, or sp uh, spirit? Could be based on any of that. And does it do physical type or magical type? And is it unmitigated? Those are the things we're looking out for as we read these skills. Um, and that's going to help you figure out how to do the most damage because you can look at what the modifier is. You can look at if it ignores defense or spirit. Um, if does it have any other bonus effects um, and things like that. And that's basically what that boils down to. So uh, to answer the original question, it was asking about, um, you know, ultimate Regina's ability. It ignores 50% of the enemy's spirit, which makes it do double damage. And it is based on her magic. So she wants a, um, she wants to have a high magic stat. Um, and it is that ability, the Regina cannon, which is her ice based attack happens to be a magic based magic attack so it is a magic attack so it's targeting the enemy's spirit it's ignoring 50 percent of their spirit and it's doing a bunch of damage based on her magic stat there you go hopefully that helps you to understand it it's a little bit complicated i know but as you start looking at the abilities and things like that um, you can kind of see you know how these units work and what their skills do and what you can get the most benefit out of as you try and focus on doing damage um, another question that just kind of came up, I want to answer this one really briefly, um, had to do with um, certain pieces of equipment. Um, and those equipments are the Clash of Wills gear. So um, let me see if I can find the unit that had it. <laughs> Don't have any units that are geared a whole lot right now. I'm just kind of messing around with a lot of stuff. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I was not prepared for this question. Uh, here we go. So the, the question was, where do I get these Magister's Rings? I see these Magister's Rings a lot. It's these right here. People care a lot about them because they have really, really high stats for all categories, as well as the Magister's Tenet, which is increased chain limit boost, which I've talked about in another video. So they're very good items, and you get these from participating in Clash of Wills. Um, as you participate in Clash of Wills, you will uh, learn, earn a piece of uh, currency called a Xenostone Shard. Um, which you can spend here in the Clash of Wills shop to make the Celestite Helmet of Will, the Garb, the Circlet, and finally the Rings. And if you go all the way to level 10 on these, you can further upgrade them to the Magisters with the Magisters Esoterica, um, which helps you to craft those rings. So that's where you get them. You get them just by participating in Clash of Wills. Um, make sure you do that. Even if you can't get a, a perfect score and get a rank one, 
definitely go in and always do at least level 99 so you can get all the free rewards out of it but you don't have to do level 99 just to get all the xeno stone i think you can cap out there at like 94 or something like that i can't remember where it was but you don't have to go all the way to 99 just do as far as you can definitely focus on getting the xeno stone and all the free tickets and things like that that way you can start crafting these rings because they do take a lot but they are worth it the the ruler's gear the emperor's gear um, the magister's gear all good options for helping you make your units as strong as possible these are just really good gear so definitely do clash of wills because um, there should be one coming up here in the next couple of weeks um, because we know it's coming according to the monthly bulletin and we're almost to the end of the month so be on the lookout for clash of wills and if you need help with clash of wills you know let me know and i will definitely do my best to try and help you out i'm all about helping out so now we've talked about how to look at abilities and determine you know what does unmitigated damage mean and where to get um magister's rings if you've got another question that you want to see answered in another video let me know in the comments below or if in if you see this video on youtube in the comments on youtube and i'll do my best to try and answer some of those that way we can all learn a little bit about the game i know i learn a lot about the game every time i look at the mechanics page so i encourage you to go check that page out as well um, and we'll be back later this week, you know, much sooner than later, um, cause this video is late, um, for Tuesday preppers, which should be coming out on Tuesday night. Uh, once we get the news drop, we'll be going over that and starting to get ready for the new content in the game, whatever that is. But until then be good to each other, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.